Yo, 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 yo. What's going on? What's going on? Gentlemen, Hello. how's it going? Yes, sir. How's it going? What Welcome, up? everybody. Welcome, chat. Welcome. It's the Weekly Toast, brand new Multiverses podcast coming at you. Of course, got Bam, E.E., e. Charles, and myself here. This is episode one. It's good to see you guys, man. This weekend was crazy, man. So, obviously, we had uh, LTC going on, and yep. shit was wild, honestly. Uh, I, I'm not sure how many entrants there were overall, but... The gameplay kind of spoke for itself and uh, hard carried the event because that shit was crazy. I didn't even watch Smash. I only watched Multiverses, bro. Why are you yeah. feeling need to take a shot at Smash? No, 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 no. It's not, it's not a shot. It's actually <laughs> not a shot. Know, man. It's not a shot. Toast for it, me, man. no, for me, bad. Multiverses hard carried the event. That was all I cared about at that particular event. No shots at Smash. Come on, man. I love Smash. Stop playing with me, man. I'm yeah. sorry, I got I got to give you I got to give you ish sometimes. But now nah, it was it was awesome. I think um yet again this kind of just reinforces the point. Obviously there were some hiccups, some bugs, no big deal, not the end of the world. But it reinforces the point that offline competitive play for this game is absolutely sick. Like it was the most excited I had been for an event since Evo and it did not disappoint. It was fun watching it. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, obviously, I'm sure we'll get into the technical stuff aside, but ultimately, when it comes to gameplay, it was amazing, right? Um, we got, like, some pretty insane storylines. I know everyone's kind of been talking about Sandstorm for some time now, and so to kind of see him come full force um, with this relatively new partner, because at least from what I was understanding from, like, what the chat was talking about at LTC, he has uh, another partner that he, that I guess, ended up dropping the game, mm -hmm. per se, and so he started, uh, you know, being with uh, Light Wisp, and, bro, they were jamming people like yeah it was Freak. actually wild to see them run up on people and just such a like even outside of them there was such a great selection of different uh, characters that we saw in different comps and to see steven universe be utilized in the right way for once finally it was a, it was a beautiful thing for sure mm -hmm. yo, yeah yeah uh, uh, yo no actually charles we share the same opinion you could take this one away bro yeah i've always thought very highly of steven uh oh yeah we've been talking about that I know at Evo it was. I mean, there a lot of things have changed since Evo, right? Like a lot of characters have been nerfed multiple times, even if they're like little tap nerfs, you know, multiple nerfs at a time. Superman got hit pretty hard last patch as well, so I don't think we saw any Superman in this top eight. But I don't know how many good Superman. Hey, just real quick, man, because I gotta talk to for my boy Kent, dude. The oh first character to get freaking twelve, freaking double digits, <laughs> double digits, of lag? double digits. Why? What did he win? Did he win he, something? <laughs> they must have thought he was bugs. That's what <laughs> <laughs> I will say, and, and this is, we'll, we'll probably bridge into this topic later on yeah, in the sure. podcast after we talk about the results. But I do want to talk about uh, how any company will balance characters because I think Riot has done a pretty good job. I mean, at least when I played like really long time ago. But I, I yeah. think their philosophy is pretty good in a sense where it's like, They'll nerf characters based off of solo queue and all levels of play. Uh -huh. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Win percentages and certain MMRs and stuff like that. All that stuff matters. And then, of course, obviously balancing towards top level play. You, I, I think you got to have a balance. And I don't think Superman was per se dominant in you know mm -hmm. tournament play. Uh, but I will. I do think that like Taz, Tornado, Superman, things like that. Those are just like. Yeah. Scrub killers, right? Yes. 100%. And if someone if someone picks up the game and gets stuffed by Superman at like ten percent four times in a row, they might just have that feeling of like, oh, this game's whack. And then yep. you know what I mean? Little do they know that they're just making really horrible decisions and yada yada yada. Yeah. But but they don't get you to gotta, that point. right. You gotta that is something to keep in mind when looking at characters like Superman or Taz and stuff like that, where it's like, well, technically they're not too crazy, but that, that's a whole nother topic. But Steven, on the other hand, uh, I've always thought that character was really strong. And I always thought that since Velma was such a big deal in the meta, I, I don't think Steven necessarily counters Velma, but Steven makes Velma play very differently because mm -hmm. when you put up that horizontal platform, she cannot like, Vel the reason why Velma's strong is because she puts pressure on the map no matter where she is, right? Because you have the full screen megaphone. Yep. yep. But if you have that horizontal wall, it blocks the megaphone off and you force Velma to like jump up, maybe throw some speech bubbles or like then jump really high up, angle the megaphone down. Or what we saw a lot is Velma would have to go over the wall, 
right, or over the sideward platform and try, or over the shield, I should say, and then try to, you know, interact and stuff like that. And Velma, you know, she can definitely scrap, but the reason why Velma's strong is the area of control she has and how far away from her teammate she can be and still put pressure out, right? Yeah. But that, but that's that shield, the horizontal, the, the sideward shield, the, the one that goes up and down, is very strong at make like keeping making Velma play different and affecting how she pressures across the map. And on top of that, Steven kind of has that same caveat where I actually think it's stronger because it's so fast. But Velma, the megaphone takes a little while. Yeah. Right. And then and then I think a lot of players are getting used. To, like you can't mix up when you release the megaphone for the hitbox, right? You can't mix that up. So no matter where Velma's pointing it, as long as you dodge at the correct time, you should not get hit by the megaphone. Obviously, their teammate can then punish you for the dodge and yada yada. Yeah. So obviously, that's still a very strong tool. I'm not trying to like downplay Velma megaphone. But Steven, on the other end, can be anywhere on the map and instantly shield his ally. And there, it doesn't matter if there's like a piece of terrain anywhere. It, it, like instantly providing impactful support anywhere on the map. It's crazy. No yeah. other character in the game can do that. It's so, so broken. It's and so then I and then we saw like everyone was talking about how Sandstorm was playing really well, and I do think Sandstorm was playing really well. But Lightwoods was getting majority of the KOs in every single game. He didn't yeah. do it by himself, bro. That's that's yeah. what I kept saying. Like everybody, was, yeah. you know, and Sandstorm deserves all his flowers. That man's a yep. monster. I was like, I was like, y'all see this Steven too, right? Like when I was <laughs> I was restreaming it, I was like, this dude's cooking. Thank yeah, you. man. I mean, like, it, yeah, it, it's absolutely insane because like you look at what you're able to do with like uh how sandstorm was moving the the combo game all these kind of things but yeah there's so many interactions the reason why he was even able to start off is because of the shield coming into play right across the stage there were so many times too where it's like sandstorm would go for an edge guard and it's like sandstorm didn't even have to dodge he could dodge but he, instead of wasting all his resources he goes down there lightwoods would be like across the stage man and my guy just had he his vision was immaculate all right this guy was clairvoyant like every single time this guy pops the shield for Sandstorm, making sure he's covered so he can go and jam the way he needs to, right? Um, I, I love that you were talking about Charles too, the wall that you can put up by Steve, right? Where Steven can be like, all right, I'm gonna put this wall here. And it's either he was doing it for even edge guards too, right? They're doing it for right. even like ledge traps, right? Where it's in this game, like you can move so fast, but when you put up that physical wall that characters have to get around, it becomes a very different thing, right? And you're essentially able to create this bottleneck where a lot of characters really can't go, uh, go through. And you have that in combined with, like, of course, like, Steven's, like, his toolkit, and then you're combining Wonder Woman with her, like, her disjointed aerials, right, and her normals, you're going to have a hard time getting off that ledge. And they found so much, like, they found so much success there. And, of course, the obscenely early kills where Steven Universe was able to just essentially to float watch sandstorm doing his combos and finish it up with a up air to close out like and get those points man so it like 100 percent, it's something where like man wonder woman is insane sandstorm is insane but life was, was really showing people finally what this character steven is capable of a lot of people slept on the character early on i mean f from the base point i remember we always talk about it man this character can create platforms in a platform fighting game there's no way he's going to be trash period that like when you have that you're always going to be good and you have all these other tandem tools. You got the combo game, the bounce house. Like, dude, some people get locked up in two seconds on their double team combos and be at, like, 80. <laughs> like, it was just ridiculous. Bro, how long have I been saying this, bro? I have been saying this exact same thing since the inception of the game. And I saw what Steven could do. I saw the potential. Yes, I am smirking because I have been saying this for <laughs> such a long time time and i kept saying steven is a ticking time bomb and you guys are gonna see just wait give it three months give it two months you'll see and finally we're at the point where someone was able to show exactly what i've been talking about and so i gotta say i told you so but the thing is and uh you brought up a good point i believe it was ee -E that said this is that were y'all even looking at light Whist? because i felt like everybody was so focused on wonder woman you already yeah. know wonder woman won evo cool then she got buffed then she got nerfed again, and now she won LTC. At what point does it go beyond, yeah, we got to just nerf uh, any character that wins, right? Versus like, oh, what if it's just the players popping off? Or what if the character is fine, they just won a tournament? So we've only had two official, like, well, like, lands, so to speak, where we had yeah. Evo and LTC, right? So we don't even have data 
other than those two tournaments to say, yo, uh, like, okay, Wonder Woman won, like, five tournaments, you know, nerf her or something like that. Like, she's obviously winning everything. Uh, there has to be a problem there. There's only been two tournaments, right? But, uh, and this does, isn't even for Wonder Woman. I feel like no matter what character wins, I'm serious about this, by the way, no matter what character wins, there's always going to be that reactionary, I want to say, just feeling of people just clamoring for nerfs immediately because a character won a tournament, but that logic is faulty. I don't think that characters should be nerfed off the basis of, oh, they won a tournament, we got to get rid of them. Like, oh, they won a tournament, we have to nerf them. You have to nerf what's toxic, you have to nerf what's oppressive. I also saw uh, people trying to basically say, yeah, look at all the Wonder Womans that are in these results. Uh, when in reality, like the tournament didn't have as many entrants to begin with to even warrant saying, hey, look at how many of this character is here, right? Versus all the data that we have from a bunch of online tournaments that are showing all these characters repetitively taking up all these top slots in them as well. Again, this is only our second land event, but... It's kind of sucks to be that Wonder Woman player because it's just like, no matter what I say about her, you're biased, Nakat. You're biased. You know what I mean? So it's just don't, like, listen, do do? listen, don't worry. I'll, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be the, the voice for you. Okay. Look, the, the comparison between Wonder Woman being nerfed compared to somebody else doesn't make any sense to me. You're not going to pick up and go as a character like Bugs. Bugs is pick up and go. Okay. I've done some outlandish things, okay? Yet again, I find myself <laughs> taking games off in the cat with a character like Bugs. Never. I couldn't do that with Wonder Woman, okay? <laughs> That's not, I'm not capable of doing that with Wonder Woman. You know oh, what I'm okay. saying? Like, Wonder well, Woman actually has, like, a higher learning curve. Yeah, you have to take that into absolutely. account. And the players who are winning, the cat is a seasoned team's player. He understands this game at a high level. Great. We already know what Sandstorm brings to the table. He's immaculate in Brawlhalla and it transferred well into multiverses. These are not some run of the mill scrubs just popping up and saying, oh, we're going to win some tournaments Wonder Woman. That's not how this shit works. Okay? That's true. That's not That's how it true. works. Wonder Woman isn't the hardest character to play. Don't get it twisted. But you're not going to tell me her and Bugs are the same equivalent where it's like, you know what? Address this immediately. Let her rock, man. Let her rock. I'm we, we all can agree, though, that Wonder Woman's hella strong, right? I think we're, she's hella strong. We're not going to cap? No, okay, I think cool. she's hella strong. I just want to make sure. Bro, I've, been say, I've been saying it. I've been saying it. <laughs> just want to make sure. Bro, I was saying it when she sucked, quote unquote, when everybody's like, yeah, she's not good. She sucks. I'm like, Are we playing the same good. game? I thought she was good back then. Now I think she's even better with all the changes that have happened to other characters, let alone like the Hurt Box rework. I'm like, all yeah, right, this just. The same patch that she got quote unquote nerfed so I was like, she's let's actually go. a net buff <laughs> i was like let's net go buff. i was net super net buff, by the way <laughs> super pumped i was super duper pumped but I, I feel like i'm okay with characters being good as long as they are not toxic that's that's just my thing right oh, i agree because I, agree, I, agree I feel like I we just that. keep nerfing like characters just because they're good not because they're toxic, just because they're good. You're going to end up with a boring cast of characters because you're removing all the things that makes these characters special to begin with. So yeah. when I equate that argument to like Bugs and Velma, it was toxic. Literally, like you could say what you want, but I don't think there's ever, uh, there hasn't been another tournament where you literally see Bugs and Velma everywhere in the results, right? But uh, at this point in time, you know, and again, because I'm saying this, obviously I'm biased, but I just don't want the cycle of a character wins X major, right? Let's remove Wonder Woman from this equation. Let's say if I could throw out a random character, Shaggy, I, I used this yesterday. Let's say Shaggy wins the next major, right? I don't want to see the entire community begging for Shaggy nerfs because Shaggy just won this major, right? And of course, Steven players, you guys are eating well because Light Wisp ain't getting no attention. So straight up, that character, nobody's bringing him up. So I guess we're just going to have strong ass Steven. You know, Steven did not add to that whole comp at all. It was just a Wonder Woman thing, right? But yeah, then after that, right, Shaggy wins this tournament. Okay, we got to nerf Shaggy. Next character wins. Let's say Rain Dog wins a major. That would be crazy, by the way. Rain Dog is obnoxious. We have to change this. Can you see what he can do? It's just like, bruh. You guys do not want to start that cycle, I promise you. It's not fun yeah. for anybody. It's not going to be good yeah. for the health of the game either. And oh, that's even highest peak right now. Like, you can't, can you really adjust a character based off just that? Like, I don't think that's. I mean, fair. we don't have enough time at all, honestly, right? Sense. Like, this, this is such a, like, yeah, I agree with you. Like, I mean, you look at this game, this is such a new meta, right? This is such a baby meta. And for, for 
I think a lot of times, even now, I'd see from, and this is not just, you know, random people chatting, but even some people who are strong players right now, right? Just kind of seeing the nuances into why people are like, oh, well, this character's um, bad. Why? Well, I played the best one and I beat them here. So the end. Like, that's not a sufficient argument, right? Uh, and then especially in a game where it's going to take time for the meta to develop to really get to a good place. I personally think that, like, where we're at right now, I mean, maybe you see some characters that, like, need to be toned. I personally feel like, hey, just buff some of these other characters that are seemingly weaker. You know, buff them a little bit and let it rock for right now because I think there's other pressing concerns too. And B, like, you need to let a game flourish. There's to so many times that we've seen this in fighting games, right, where you have this idea of it's this this buff nerf culture right and everyone lives and dies on it characters don't even get developed some characters are actually strong and like you know no one ever sees it time and day right they just get more buffs more buffs and also once people learn to play the character then in tandem with those buffs they're insane right mm -hmm. um or some characters get nerfed to the ground and it's only because people don't recognize how to get around and circumvent some of these tactics and these strategies so Definitely hope that, uh, I think it's good that we have a, a dev team that is able to look at the game, assess the situation. Um, I, I love that they're knowledgeable enough to have pretty decent discernment between what they're going to buff and nerf, um, depending on what people are crying about. But I still think at the end of the day, like, you know, you got to let the game rock for a bit, let it flow and see what what it makes right because that's where you get to see the beauty when games take time and people learn to evolve the meta themselves without any intervention needed i have something to say but it's not a shot i just have to say that before e gets on my ass because i'm gonna talk about smash for a second <laughs> so when it comes to smash right we uh we never know when we're getting a balance patch we don't we never know it That's just true. it just happens, right? And there's an ending point too, where they say the game's finished. Uh, enjoy Steve, Kazi, and Min Min, have a blast, see ya. But with this game, we have the ability, or we are blessed with the opportunity to consistently have these updates. It's a nice thing, right? And so I see a lot of people uh, bringing into question just how often should the game be balanced. My thing that I'm seeing right now, though, with the game being so consistently patched, is that a lot of players are actually clinging on to the hopes of a nerf fixing their problem, right? So, with this yep. being said, competitively, and not the casual player base, by the way, this is just the competitive player base. I'm seeing a lot of people that are depending, highly depending, on a character getting nerfed to fix their issue rather than learning how to outplay. I mean, uh, I think, Charles, you brought this up earlier about, like, Taz, Nato getting nerfed, right? That's just, you know, what happened. And so, even, like... I can understand why it was pretty degenerate, <laughs> but, you know, at least speaking from my own experiences with Void, uh, teams that did that were like a free win to us because we've dealt with the real tornado that I don't even need to bring up. But um, so being <laughs> able to actually fight that off where everybody else was being so like, well, not everybody, but most people, I hate this. This is not fun to fight, blah, blah, blah. It's just like, okay, whatever, right? We learned how to outplay it. We beat it, done. But the thing is, is right when a game continues to get patched over and over and over and people know that it's going to continue to get patched, it's just like, all right, so why should I even improve my own skill and learn how to outplay and develop better habits as a player when I could just pray for this nerf to happen and maybe that fixes my problems to then still lose to the same character after they get nerfed anyway, to then allow the cycle to continue for waiting for more nerves. You feel me? You understand what I mean by that? Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the thing that I'm hoping to avoid, right? And this is pretty much like a player thing, right? This has nothing to do with the developers. Developers doing their job, actually just patching the game and making sure the game is healthy. But players, in my opinion, want, instead of working to improve, they want to basically be fed a nerf to make their troubles yeah. go away. And that's just not going to work in a competitive environment. Yeah, right, not right. at all. Uh, Look what happened structure. to Pichu! <laughs> Adios! Right, I mean, just the, the, the structure of it all. And I mean, I think the way people are looking at it too is they just look at the winner. And you gotta, there's so many factors to keep in mind, especially with LAN events. With online events, there's other factors to keep in mind, like, you know, the net code and yada yada. But it's more accessible, right? Not 
all the best players went to every single LAN. You know what I mean? And I'm not trying to take away from anything from the winners of those LAN events, but not every single player on the planet that is a top level competitor went to those line events that is the rela- reality we live in yeah. and there will never be a tournament that every single good player goes to right because there's even so i mean this is in smash and it's the same for multiverses there's probably people that just can't afford to go out to those things right maybe they're really good and they're wi-fi fiends and they're top ranked but they just can't so there's never going to be a line event with every single player that could possibly win the event at that event but i mean so you have to take that into context, right? But one thing you can look at is saturation. And that's, mm-hmm. the, in my opinion, the more consistent thing to look at. What was the okay. most represented character in top 32, top 64, top 8, top 16, right? And you even, like, you can't just focal point on first place. You got to take it down a notch. Um, I mean, one of the most dominating characters in platform fighters is Brawl Meta Knight. And when you looked at, like, top <sighs> first place... Top four, top eight, top sixteen, top thirty-two. Like it, it's got to be like seventy, eighty percent players. Something yeah. along those lines. That is, that saturation. That's a problem. That's unhealthy, right? Yeah. So, not just looking at the winner of the tournament, but looking. You you gotta take. You gotta bring the camera back. You gotta like see the whole picture, right? Yep. And I I, I would I'm pretty sure I would assume Velma was the most represented character in top eight. If I'm not mistaken, and that character has been nerfed quite a bit, and I mean, of, we, of uh, LTC, yeah, I'm actually gonna pull up the results or right low now. Low Tech City. Um, I, I'm not oh, too sure. Tech City, yes. There's so tech. many damn oh, variations yeah, of it. It's LTC, so man. <laughs> I don't know what yeah, yeah, Clownfest. Anyways, yeah. continue. <laughs> but uh, but Evo, I'm pretty sure Velma and Bugs. I'm not. I'm not too sure which one, but it was a combination of Velma and Bugs that were the most represented, and it was like by far. You know what I mean? Like, the saturation was very, very clear for Evo, mm-hmm. but there's also context to Evo, right? What's simple? What's effective? We don't have that much time with the game, and I want to get these... I want to cash in this dub yep. right now. Give yeah, it to and, me now. Right, and then there's some players that are going to deviate from that, you know what I mean? And just play what they like and still get the dub and not go with the meta per se, right? But... It's the most effective strategy is to just do that. Velma and Bugs, very simple, very effective. It's very clear that they're overtuned at the time of Evo, so just go with that. Um, since then, there's been quite a bit of nerfs, and I think we did see a good amount of variety in, you know, uh, LTC's top eight. So that that was a good thing, and I don't think there was like a crazy oversaturation. And I think the direction that the patches have going have been going so far is a great direction. I, I got the. They're kind of. Spread throughout uh-huh. everything, you know what I mean? Like, we, we see, like, the degenerate stuff that lower-level players get really frustrated at getting hit. And then there's also very concerning things like Bugs and Velma that have been hit multiple times in small dosage, right? So they can kind of see how it equates. I have the results up right here, right? So Sandstorm oh, Lightless. Characters? Yeah, that was Arcula Wonder Stalkers. Woman. This is this is, like, off of memory, too. This is uh, Wonder Woman Steve. Steven. Oh, man. Uh, Mirror Man, Rose J, Bugs Bunny, Arya, J Mafia, Alex, another Bugs Bunny, and a, a Jake. Sinum, Leviathan, went Wonder Woman, and ugh, Leviathan plays so many characters, but I saw him using Velma in top eight. Coslix so, and Rexay. Yeah, yeah, I believe Coslix and Re- uh, Rexay were also Wonder Woman, and uh, they use whatever's meta pretty much. Uh, what, Wonder Woman and Velma? I believe, yeah. No cash is yeah. a Aria. I do not know who Luck plays. Uh, K7, Vel- it was a Velma Batman team, I believe. And then mm-hmm. Bandman and yeah. Broski, Velma and Bugs Bunny. So you obviously do still yeah. see the Bugs Bunny and Velma there. Uh, you could say there's, what, three Wonder Womans? You know, okay. but Like two and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah think- two, two and a half, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, sure. Uh, no, they... no cash was a bugs are yet. So the bugs and Velma are pretty damn still prevalent. They're still yeah. there. I mean, yeah. this is still at the end of the day. They're like, they're still like we talked about, like easy characters to pick up, right? But also, I think out of the like when you look at this roster, because Bugs also provides a lot of support because he just does everything, right? So like, even though he's a mage, so like a lot of his stuff just like ends up being kind of support, right? Through the nature of, like, his moveset and how much space he occupies. And then Velma is just, like, such an easy-to-pick-up support when there's very few supports in this game, 
So I don't think that we're going to see Velma drop off anytime soon until we see the existence of more like proper supports. Because I think right now it's very clear that people are looking at this game and it's like, all right, it seems like it's best to have a support plus like a, a tank or a bruiser or something like that, right? Like that seems to be the wave right now. It's a very, it makes sense. We've seen that kind of comp like in not even just multiverses, but just like in a lot of similar games where you have the class system, right? You look at having some support, you buff this tank, this tank can go out and jam people, right? Or you buff this bruiser, they can go out and jam people. So I think that's going to continue to happen just because of the current roster that we have. Even though I do believe that Velma, uh, I think Velma's in a good place right now. And like even bugs too. Maybe there's some things that I still think that's kind of wild, but I think they're in a co- okay place right now. Like I think they can be left alone, and we can just really just let this meta flush out. But no surprise to see those characters um, being saturated because of those reasons. Might eyes. have to disagree on Velma only, but that's that's about it. So I I think <laughs> the way they're doing it is like because what the game's like in open beta, right? That's correct. Yeah. So essentially, the way I kind of look at it, and it maybe it'll help like people rationalize and not get so frustrated is it's almost like you know given like how there are online events to compete in and just like a lot of awesome um battles that are displayed like just look at the community just look at yourself as part of the dev team okay you're helping flesh out some of the stuff that they're adjusting and it's not like it's always permanent right like they can revert back some things should they feel like a nerf went too far or a character just kind of fell way too hard and you know because we have to make way for new characters coming in and just like the way that to keep the game fresh you know what i mean like that's kind of the way i see it i don't think it's like the end of the world uh some of these you know adjustments for sure i get why it's frustrating 100 percent. but i mean at the end of the day it's it's just you know they're gonna at some point reach a point where it's like okay we'll have uh seasonal balances instead of like weekly balances i think that's where people want to see these things get to because it'll allow them like you've been talking about adapting and creating and fleshing out a meta, which will be sick. Uh, we're just not quite there yet. But I, that's what I believe is going to eventually be the case. It'll be like seasonal mm-hmm. updates rather than just weekly on the fly ones. Yeah, no, for sure. Like it's, it's, it's all a process ultimately, right? And so I think that as we get this game closer to the proper like release and, you know, things are going to make more sense. So a lot of people, like, it's not about, like, getting frustrated about these things, taking it in strides, and really learning the global mechanics of the game, right? Because those are the things that are going to seldom change, if anything, uh, in my eyes. But, yeah, Nakat, talk to me, man, because I know you were talking about, uh, like, Velma. Like, I still think Velma is really, really strong, obviously, but I think that there part of it, there is a part of that aspect that people recognize that she is the most, like, out of the fewer supports we have, She's the easiest to pick up, Bruh. and like just to be strongest. Like she's hella good, and I think I do think that if we get more supports that can on the similar tone kind of hit those kind of points, I do think that we see a world where we see a little bit less Velma. Bro, Gizmo is really easy to pick up, and she's crazy. Gizmo's really good right now, and mm-hmm. I still barely see him in relation to Velma. Uh, same with Rain Dog. I think Steven's gonna get a, a uptick in his player base after this tournament. Yeah. But uh, at the same time, I just feel like, why would you play them if you have Velma, right? I think that uh, the, the, the issue with Velma is I think she's super hard to actually make work because of what her kit is and what it's supposed to do. So I think it's very easy to break that character if you nerf her uh, in certain ways. And then you just make her just, why is she even there, right? So I disagree with that, man. I feel like she has so many random things you could just take away and she'd be good. Really? Yeah, like, I just feel like she has all these random things, like, oh, I just uh, give you ice stacks. Why? Whatever. Oh, I give you weakness stacks here. Why? Whatever. Like, I think some of her base Cooldown stuff... reduction. Why? Whatever. <laughs> exactly. Like, if you literally just remove these random things, like, she just has all these things, like, and bonus, she does this. Why? <laughs> you know? Like, I feel like you remove some of those things, like... I think, if anything, one that's probably more the most locked into her kit would be, like, the cooldown reduction, if anything. But, it's like, even that, like, just whittle that down so it's not as, like, because it, it's so jarring, right, in comparison, right, because of the reduction it does now. Like, you can just whittle that down. I think that's very easy. And then I think just a, there's a lot of just little things that her kit does, right? It's not just the words doing it. It's like you're getting hit by this, and you're getting armor here, and you're picking up a clue, you're getting armor here, and you're getting, you know, your cooldown. Then you're getting your ice stack. Then you're getting your weekend. It's just all that stuff, like that amalgamation of all those things is what beca- makes this character so strong in tandem for her being far away and just, she can just blast down to you, right? 
I, I think that you keep let her keep those things, like allow her her, her baseline toolkit without all these these uh, like like essentially perks that she has. Like take remove those, and I think you're in a very different place, you know. But that's that's my that's always been my viewpoint. So uh, I just feel like she has all apparently apparently weakness is gone. By the way, bam, weakness. Yes, is gone. yes, yeah. That no, that is gone. That is gone, and I was very happy about that one. Because that, like, I was just like, "What the heck? Like, <laughs> why? Why do you? Ha- why do you have these things?" Just her overall you know? utility still is just super duper yeah. strong to the point where, like, as much as I love Gizmo and I think he's really strong right now, I still feel like uh, it's it's. I would just take a Velma, like I would, right? Yeah. And, and uh, you know, with with how I feel or felt about Bugs and Velma this entire time, uh, I don't want them nerfed to the point where they're unplayable. Like that's that's not the goal. My only mm-hmm. goal was to ever want them to just fall in line with the rest of the cast to not cause that saturation that was happening. And while I feel like Bugs is still prevalent and he's still useful and he's still a good character you're starting to kind of see him i don't want to he's not falling off like that's not the word for it but he's pretty much kind of falling into place finally but uh personally for me i just don't see velma there yet currently at all yeah i mean i could see some tweaks here and there that would be good for her i mean again i think it's just hard because having a support right now in this in team comps is just very strong right or having a mage that can like because some of these mages honestly are like very the line is very thin between some of these mages and support right just to keep it a buck so like i think there's some of those that kind of fits closest to that and then that's why they're strong too like it's going to be hard for velma because she's no matter what she's easy to pick up right and she has very strong a toolkit so even if you neuter that somewhat it's still going to be an easy to pick up character it's a very popular character too. Like yeah. the IP is very popular. Yeah. And so all people are just going to play that character off like naturally, right? Like I'm going to play if if I had a choice between freaking Gizmo and Velma, I'm sorry, dude. Like yeah, there's some some of you love Gremlins and all that stuff. I don't give a damn about that. <laughs> like I'm going to like I would play Velma. Velma's the <laughs> Jinkies, dude. That's what I know. I don't I'm know. Playing Gizmo. Gizmo. Yeah. Okay, look, if, I'm if playing Velma, Gizmo. That's great, listen, dude. Listen. It's Velma, dude. Like if that's, Velma just, that's another is... thing too. It's still so good, right? And I think she is still good, right? I don't think she is what she used to be, but she's still so good. How come in Grands, Rose J didn't try one time, Velma? That shit wasn't working. <laughs> oh, you to get right up on it. <laughs> but Arya wasn't working. Like, why did they not at least try? I, the I do feel bad. I, you're correct I about that. It. Maybe it's just me. You're I correct, EE. E. You're 100% correct. The issue, bro, in that Grands is Arya was not working, bro. Like, that's what I'm saying. She like, actually I've seen Rose J's wasn't like, working. It was nasty. Like, whoof. Like, I don't know, man. There were like key opportunities there where I felt like, all right, Arya should kill here. Arya should be able to do this. And I mean, imagine like not only did Arya get like reworked in a like, you know, her, her obsession got reworked, but she has to go through all those layers of armor to try to do anything. Like, you're not just dealing with one armor character, you got two. Because Steven, of course, has his shields as well. It's just like, well, yeah. fuck. All right. <laughs> How am I actually going to land the solid blow to get what I need to get? So it yeah. just felt like that character got countered out entirely to the point where I was like, was was Rose Day even in the match? No shade at Rose Day at all. Rose Day's, he has my respect, at least. I think he's a great player. But it yeah, just felt like they just player. took him out of the game. I, mean, I saw him wow. land some combos there, but it just it just was nearly it wasn't enough. And I think that even the Velma, like, I, yeah, I see, like, hey, why not just try it to see what's up? But also at the same time, too, just kind of looking at their dynamic, I felt like the offense, a lot of the offense was, you know, coming from Roger per se. And then it's like, then you look at Mirror Man, like, if you're Velma, then you're kind of gonna like you want to support Bugs to go and get these kills. And that was not happening. Like they were just getting rushed down, like OD rushed down. Like, that Velma's not going to be sitting back there. Freaking Sandstorm's flying across the stage and just bodying cats. Like, dude, he, like, whiff punished someone, like, half a stage away at one point. Like, there was just, there was, there was, there was, there was literally no world. Like, he just really, he, like, he did the freaking, the dash jump, the dash super jump, and then literally just, like, in someone's face, fared him to oblivion. Like, no, nah, I don't think the Velma would have worked there. And I think he, that's what he saw, too. He felt like they needed some offensive firepower to even the odds. And yeah, it just was not working because... I was looking for an answer. I wasn't shield. telling him what to do. I just looked for oh, an for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I do think you try it just for the sake of trying, even just to kind of clear it up or whatever, too. 
But I think that matchup would have been rough as well. I, I don't think anything would have changed that result. Fortunately, they were uh, they were getting pummeled, dude. That that was rough to watch. That was quick. Yeah, yeah, and I again the the Steven the Steven platforms right kind of cut them off, and maybe mm-hmm. they kind of saw that from their run because I mean Sandstorm and Lightwish started top eight in losers, and they were like destroying all the villains. Destroying. Oh yeah, them. they locked them so up. So maybe. Maybe it was along that mentality. I'm not too sure what they talked about or whatnot. I do think it was worth trying, at least for one game, and see what happens, right? Yeah. And even maybe even trying to develop some counter play. I'm not too sure how many how much health each of those platforms do have on Steven when he puts them out and stuff like that. So maybe figuring out, like, oh, hey, like we got to hit it. Or maybe your front line. Because it's very clear that the meta, the meta right now is there's a front line character and there's a back line character. Yep. How yep. effective... Is your frontline character Wonder Woman brings a lot of utility. Wonder Woman's one of the better rushdown characters. One of your fastest aerials is an armor breaking move, right? Like she just has all of that with the perk of like, oh, I can shield my ally, cleanse stuff, right? Give them armor. So she brings a lot to the table. But Superman also acts like a very good frontliner. There's a lot of other good frontliners. I actually think Bugs is a, a frontliner that's not too bad, right? Some of your assassins, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, that's why I like. I just don't even really feel like bugs is a mage because he does control area but it's not fast they're like high cooldown moves and it's like okay let me like bring that safe down make a hole by the safe maybe this the safe goes in like a u-shape controls like a big area but that is not as consistent as like velma speech bubbles or velma megaphone right velma has consistent full screen pressure which Mm -hmm. is why and she's very easy to pick up which is why i think she's very popular and even though, like, they took away so like Velma's speech bubbles used to heal. That's a like, you know what I mean. So again, why not? Well, right, and they took that away. They took they're taking away the weakness, right? So and even like Velma can give armor. She can lay a freeze trap. Like there, Velma, Velma and Bugs just feel like characters that kind of do it all. But so I mean, maybe they can tone some things down there. But kind of just comparatively, look at. Look at other backline characters and just think of what they provide. I think Steven is a great backline character and can even, like, scrapping it KOs at 60. I don't know why the up air is so strong, but it is. Um, and watching Sandstorm and Lightwiz, like, double team chase down people in juggle situations, there's so much times where I was just like, this person's boned. This person can't do anything. They're in the air. Like, Sandstorm and Lightwiz are perfectly spaced, and it's just like, no matter what option you pick, you're going to get... Up specialed or up aired and die at fifty or sixty. So their their double team chase downs were crazy, crazy, crazy. And then again, Steven can provide support instantly, full screen, like yep. full screen, and it's faster than megaphone, creating the platforms. Right now, look at a character like Rain Dog. Great support, right? You can save your allies, but that's on a cooldown. And then on top of that. Like, even when you look at Rain Dog's projectiles, they're a little on the slower side, right? Mm-hmm. And, may, like, they might reach full screen, but how fast do they reach full screen? And stuff like that. So you really got to compare some of these other, like, backline characters. We, we call them supports and mages, but, you know, some it, it, it like, depends, right? So yeah. just the, these, these backline characters, how much support do they provide? At what range do they provide it at? How fast do they provide it? These are all really key factors. And how much utility do they bring to the team, right? Because, like, yeah. I don't see Rain Dog making armor, weakening, healing. Uh, obviously, like, weakening and healing got taken away from Velma. But, like, just kind of when you compare that. He basically has Ignite. Yeah, like, he does yeah. a lot of damage. He does, yeah. like, Rain Dog is designed to do lots and lots of damage. Yeah. And even in closed alpha, when Ignite was really broken and Grey Health was broken, like, it was average. You would see Rain Dog do, like, to 500 damage and it was like that was a normal thing so yeah that 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 is like rain dogs niche but is it is that damage the value of that damage outweigh what velma brings to the table or steven brings to the table right steven can shut down ko confirms like oh i'm on reaction i see the enemy aria of special my teammate and they're about to go for the finishing ko shield on reaction yep. instant like the only time Rain Dog can instantly stop something like that is with the tether already hooked up. So it's like something's got to be preemptively set up, yada yada, right? So 
I'm not saying Rain Dog is bad by any means, but I'm just saying when you compare, like the role that Rain Dog does, when you compare it to some of the other characters and like how fast he can provide support and stuff like that, you know, I, I, I just think the other characters outclass him just a little bit. Like yeah. Rain Dog can still be used, and we still see Rain Dog at top level play. Yeah, but I, I just think the other characters provide like more range, faster. Right, and then they just do less damage. So and I'm, it, yeah, and I, I agree with that. And I, I think that's why you probably see just a bit more. That's why you see, like, regardless of Rain Dog maybe being like the the weaker side, right, of the support class. Like that class is just so strong right now because there's not many back like backline characters, right? You have we have a lot of frontline characters. We have a lot of characters who can play up in front and swing around and do damage and do those things. You know, the standard DPS characters, you know, Bruiser Tank, whatever you want to call them, but. Really, you don't have many characters that can be in the back line and give you so much value, like the Charles point. Like, you don't like we have one character that can pop a shield there in that way, right? Uh, like an actual like blocking, like do a block shield, right? You have obviously Wonder Woman with her her armor slash shielding, whatever you want to call it, right? And her cleanse, you know. And it's like even her part of her value is because even she's a frontline character, she has something that's a really, like a pretty solid support thing, right? And being able to put on that shield and be able to cleanse. Yeah. And it's a very it's the same thing where like Rain Dog, like even if he's like the weaker in comparison to like uh a Steven or a Velma, he still can pull you in and that is like being able to just negate like kill confirms is huge, right? And Velma, she doesn't do it in that way, but like she essentially can make you have hitboxes fly out of your body. She freaking, like, does all this insane stuff, right? So, like, she has the ice stacks and everything. She just gives you coverage, right? It's like you have Doom missiles floating around you all the time. And so that's what is really strong right now. And again, I do believe that if we had more supports in this game that were very clear in that class, I, I think that we wouldn't see Velma as much. I think right now there's just not that many. And the other ones are kind of harder for people to pick up. Like, I think Morty is actually crazy really too, good. but yeah. What'd you say? I'm surprised we didn't see Morty. No, I, I was saying it's going to be a while, ain't it? Because you're not going to tell me Black Adam and Stripe are going to be support. Oh, yeah, free. No, I agree. I, I agree. <laughs> I, I, it, it, yeah, I hope they scrap. We, we need some more scrappers. I ain't going to lie to you, man. I, I'm, I'm happy to see Morty. I'm happy to see Rick, but uh, a little too much uh, flying all over the screen, man. I need, I need to get back to someone duffing people, right? That might be just the, the Clark Kent and me talking, man, but I, 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 I need to see some hands. That's your Kent, man. That's your inner Kent coming out, man. I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah, I'm at Daily Planet, baby. <laughs> what we doing, it, man? So I, I, that's what I need to see. I, I hope that Black Adam definitely scraps, man. We need that for sure. But yeah, that that that's one of the things that's kind of interesting to me about in this game because you've definitely seen some of these uh, like classes be kind of not kind of ambiguous. You know, so there's a lot of characters that kind of toe the line, and the characters that seem to be rising and like who have been strong are, have been the characters who kind of do it all or they do a couple key roles really really well um and then like then it's like support especially if you have any support like parts in your toolkit that's just going to be huge because we just don't have that many support well because morty feels like a support i i like to me support and mage feel like the same class at least to yeah me. like the only yeah. outlier is like bugs doesn't really feel like a mage slash support he just feels like a character that does crazy combos has absurd moves and then has really really long impactful cooldowns that cover the stage so i i kind of get why he's a mage but like they're they're he's not like he's a mage when his cooldowns are up and then when he doesn't have his cooldowns like he's not a mage anymore because his yeah. cooldowns take so long obviously you can take cooldown perks to kind of compensate for that but i feel like morty kind of fills the same role and i i actually think he's one of the stronger backliners right now like on the same I think he's one of I think he's one of the strongest characters in the game right now, but yeah, right. No, I I agree, and I I think he I think in terms of like backliners, he's one of the best backliners right now, because I mean the the amount of stuff he can throw out, right? Like his his projectiles are really really strong. He has, he has a way better disadvantage than Velma. Velma's disadvantage, like you can dare stall and you can protect yourself with up air when you're off stage, but. Morty having the portals is really strong. The UFO is really strong. He mm -hmm. he can consistently live to pretty high percents 
and you you cover that mid range, right? You're you're that mage or sla mage slash support class, so you can come in with projectiles, support your teammates, right? The bombs are really good, so yeah, I'm I'm actually really surprised we didn't see that much Morty, uh, and we just saw a bunch of Velma, maybe just none of the Morty players went to this tournament. That see again, we have to take a bunch of these. We have to take a bunch of the data from offline with a grain of salt, which is why online data is the most consistent because that's the whole entire player base, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, yeah. with online tournaments, there's not, um, you know, you are playing online, so it's not the gameplay itself won't be as consistent, but at least the player base, your data pool, that's more consistent. Yep. So, yeah. I mean, a lot of people think Morty's one of the strongest characters. We didn't see a single Morty. Does that in in top eight of LTC? Does that mean Morty's bad? God no. Morty's yeah, insanely no strong right yep, now. Yep. Mm -hmm. That character is wild. Like <laughs> that character can just oh, I'm gonna blow up the screen now. And if you're anywhere in the vicinity of these huge grenades, you're eating like fifty percent. Like, or you're just dying. Or, yeah. Or you yeah. just straight die. <laughs> if you have percent on you, you're dead. You're basically dead. Right. The character fights you in front like a bruiser, and then also is just shooting things around like a mage, right? So like it's a hybrid, it's, baby. Those characters like yeah, that are just hybrids. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Cool. There's and and there's a lot of hybrids in the game for sure. I actually do think, for the sake of people understanding the game, I think it would be great to actually classify characters with a like their main class and then their like subclass, subclass or yeah. something. I think that would be very important because there's a lot of characters that toe the line here in this game. And I, I think that sometimes you look at something, especially if you're making, I'm assuming you make the class system for people to be able to directly understand, especially when you're going to have a lot of characters eventually in this game. Like, I should be able to be like, oh, that character is a tank, right? And no, they're going to be mostly tank things. Not like it's a tank and all of a sudden they're flying around supporting the world. And I'm like, wait, what the heck is going on? You know what I mean? So yeah, that, that's just a little thing. But yeah, I, I agree, man. We need to recognize that, dude, there's... So many, there's so many things that we didn't see. There's so many comps that we didn't see purely due to the nature of going to these in-person tournaments. In-person tournaments are important because they have, they have more, they tend to have more visibility because they're going into this like, or kind of built community base, right? Seeing people in person, right? Seeing their reactions from them. It's just, it takes on a life of its own. But like these online tournaments, like regardless of what you want to say about the netcode, the netcode is pretty damn good. You know what I mean? There's going to be little things here and there that need to be adjusted for sure. Um, you know, random like glitches that take place. But in terms of a fighting game, having server-based rollback period is going to put you in a good position where you can, and you're having more of the player base, to Charles' point, that can actually participate. So you can get a lot of value there from that data set. So I think that's really great, man. But um Kind of like transitioning to topic because I do think this is something we we hundred percent have to talk about, man. Sure. Uh, for all the greatness that we saw from LTC and the gameplay, man, Land is in a very bad position right now when it comes to multiverses, and that needs to be addressed. I, I think that this. I think it's always important because you're going to have more people who can participate when it comes to online. But I do think we, I would love to see some changes come soon where people can play this game more offline as well, right? Whether it's coming through having co-op, right? Having a co-op teams. Like, I would love to be like, hey, I go to my friend's house. We play on the same console, right? Or the same PC. And we, you know, we team up. That'd be lit, right? If we... Can, if people can go around and it feels like there's a kind of cleaner or better UI so people can play on LAN, you know, obviously the big thing with the keyboards, a lot of people are playing keyboard because there's a huge player base that comes from Brawlhalla, which is definitely a, a player base that Bro, you Bro, that in, really you know, surprised me, honestly. Yeah. I did not know that even like in that community, I did not know keyboard was like such a... A big oh, thing for plat for fighters, them, bro. Yeah. I did yeah, not know that at all. Big, yes. So the it, last DreamHack Atlanta, they had a really big Brawl Hall of Tournament. I mean, Charles were there. And I remember walking over to that area to just kind of watch the matches. And like all, like 70% of people were using keyboard. And I was just like, yeah. what? Yeah. Like, like what? blew my mind. And like, they were, you have like, to think about it, though. It makes sense, right? Think about it this way, right? We know the value of a hitbox. Right, everyone knows the value of a hitbox. The problem you know, most of the time with a hitbox is that a, it's something that like people are usually they play on a console, so they play with a controller. 
they don't get it that way, right? Or it's like B that you also need to buy a whole new, you know, you know, you have to buy a hitbox, right? So you have that. Um, so just in general, the accessibility of that is going to be harder. But when it's a keyboard, everybody's got a keyboard for the damn PC. So it's like, and you've been playing on this quote unquote hitbox all your life because you're typing and doing stuff on a keyboard. So from that standpoint, if you know it's the most effective thing to use, then you're just going to use it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And it's funny because in the FGC, most people will call a hitbox like, you know, cheating or whatnot. And if you can just get that good of a controller without paying extra money, you know, and I'm going to do it. Brawlhalla <laughs> is played on PC, to my knowledge. I, I, yeah. I don't know if you can play Brawlhalla on a console or not. It's, but... it's definitely on console, too. Oh, OK, OK. But... I believe I saw it on Switch. Really? Okay. Uh, you can I, I play think, on console. Think, yeah, on console. yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. But but I assume most people, when the first time they play it, mo most people have PCs, right? Not everyone yeah, yeah. has a console, but mo most people have PC or whatever. Yep. It's on even mobile, dang. Everyone's got a phone. So it, it's not too surprising, especially in a competitive space where it's just like, oh, well, keyboard give as a controller, keyboard gives you the most advantage by far, right? Because you, you're going to be able to do inputs that are way harder to do than controller because with a controller when you have an analog stick there's travel time like you, you can't mm -hmm. go from right to left in a frame right or maybe you can it's it's like really hard because you're you have to like literally travel whereas with a button press it's like pop up right so it's, it's yeah. way easier to do really frame tight stuff like that so no surprise and it, it, it it's it it just makes it hard with so many different controllers it, like the game is cross platform as well so it's like there the game came with a lot of things right and for open beta but on top of that it does leave complications i do think it the land mode not being ready now kind of hurts the competitive tournament scene from growing because every time a teal wants to do it it's like oh snap you know uh, can can we do this event can we even make this mm -hmm. happen Right. So I do think them fix or, you know, them fixing that is going to be very, very important moving forward just to make sure that the competitive because the competitive scene will grow itself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For the most part. I, I mean, look at Smash, like almost next to no nothing when it comes to support and it grew itself, you know, quite well over so many, like yeah. over a decade. Right. So mm -hmm. multiple decades. <laughs> It's pretty obvious that the the main focus is is for online, which you know it. it like I said, you know we're almost like kind of like the the play testers and guinea pigs for certain things like that, and that's fine. And and well, I made so there was a tweet yesterday Tony made, you know, promoting LTC top eight, and I was like, I commented and I said, awesome, you know, offline potential is infinite. And then like seven hours later, after the tournament concluded, he went back to that reply and it was like, we've got some work to do. So so uh, so obviously he acknowledges the fact that sure for for offline competition for land events. It's definitely going to require a little bit more um, attention, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like we're still, I, I think it's still a treat that we even get to play it right now while the game technically isn't even finished. Like it's awesome, so I have no complaints regarding that. I think TOs just have to understand, like for Evo, they had the actual Warner Brothers dedicated team there. Like they know exactly what they're doing. They're able to kind of address a lot of those problems on the fly. Like for something like LTC, it's kind of like okay, well, if the, our problem arises, we have to kind of like come up with our own hot fix, which they're not necessarily ready for. So I don't think you have to necessarily push offline right now but understand that there are solutions and um those you know those variables will be handled and things of that nature are coming soon so it's not like they don't know it's just like it's not quite there so you don't need to really force it but when it is to that point where we can play flawlessly offline for events that are going to be having like hundreds even thousands of entrants it's, it's going to be a wonderful thing so it's really just something to look forward to uh, as far as you know i'm kind of looking at it like you know, it, that's just my take for sure yeah. yeah no i think i think offline is super duper important i think both are important right because uh yeah. as you stated like not everybody's going to have the chance to go offline to compete some people just don't have the means some people uh don't have the permissions to be able to travel that far you know there's a lot of different variables that go into it so i think um a priority of course needs to of course be the uh, stability of online which is something that they've already said that they've been working on this entire time you know and so yeah uh, as that's that gets one, sorted sure. out, that's always number one. Yeah, the online experience exactly. is going to be the most common experience for exactly. the entire play, player mm -hmm. base, right? So that, and that's why even you know, like we said earlier, but buffing and nerfing, compare like looking at the data of online win rates throughout multiple different MMRs and buffing and nerfing based off of that is yep. very important. 
for yep. the game. And like you said, you can't yep. you can't just you can't just uh only balance with like top level play in mind. If you do that, you're literally going to alienate and just isolate a lot of your player base because most of your player base will not be top level. It's just not gonna happen. So that's, if you're only true. balancing for top level, then that leaves everybody else to pretty much fend for themselves, right? And of course, it's annoying at top level for to see balances for low level because it might not reflect or make sense at top level for those things to change. My issue with the whole Taz thing and blah, blah, blah. But I was also able to understand that if you leave Tornado the way it is, there won't be a low level to even enter these tournaments or make the game larger or watch the game. You know, it's just going to hurt the game overall. So you have to always keep that in mind as well. But, you know, back to the topic of online versus offline, I think Right now, online stability, 100% mm -hmm. focus. And then once that's good to go, or while you're, you know, focusing on that, of course, you know, just get the offline in check to make it as best as it could possibly be because offline is going to be super duper important for not only just like, I don't want to say just pushing the game into the mainstream, you know what I mean? But uh, I mean, offline in itself is a whole different experience, right? Just from looking at the game to actually visually seeing the players and just little different interactions as well, it kind of markets the game on its own, you know? Yeah. So you definitely want that to be a thing. And as you can see with the Evo badges, if you perform offline, you might get rewarded online as well with some exclusive little perks and stuff like that, which is really cool. I mean, if you look at, if you went to Evo and you got an Evo badge, that is not something that can be bought in the shop that is exclusive no, sir. the value of your account goes up because you have that and i ain't saying i'm gonna sell my account or anything like that but it's really Ooh. nice to have that yeah. exclusive like <laughs> check this out evo yeah, badge that's pretty yeah i'd be hiding that shit though because that's when the sweats come out when they see that shit so i just be like i ain't putting this on I'm trying yeah. to kick back relax they see an evo badge they start playing like it's evo there you go. I mean, that's hype, man. <laughs> Never I use mean, your you... custom skins in bad. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, that's sick. I, I, wish, I wish me and Charles had that, you know, a nice little Evo purchase. No, but you were close. You were close, we, we right? Were pretty close, yeah. And next time, yeah. win, Jims. Yeah, you would have got a badge. I know. Well, yeah, we Jimmy. don't have anything for Evo now. It's so sad. <laughs> but no, like, that's, that's really cool, right? And just like with that in mind, uh, even though there were the hiccups that did happen at the tournament, if there was ever a team that I believed in to make it right at some point, it's definitely this team, like a hundred percent. So, uh, you know, looking forward to more land events in the future when that is all settled and done and looking forward to seeing even more grassroots events, just like tournaments, just deciding, Hey, I want to run multiverses and they run it. That's like, that's dope, you know? So really happy about that. Yeah, I think yeah. overall the event was super sick. The level of gameplay, you know, did not disappoint. Super sick gameplay. Uh, can't believe the 6-0 happened again, but I believe in here. <laughs> Damn, man. Me that and Roger, I, think, I, I, th I think they got it next time, but <laughs> not again. That shit. That shit hurt. Yeah, that shit hurt it. <laughs> that I saw. Hurt. I was giggling, bro. I was giggling. Dog. Yeah, I was like, man. I, I, I could see them fluster to you on that camera for man. sure. So like, for sure. After uh, that, I think it, I one. think they began to start playing to not get six would Like it, it wasn't oh, even like, yo, uh, we're gonna yeah. win this, man. It's just like, yo, we at least need to take one. Yeah, don't let him embarrass this, man. And then there was that, that one they had that was really close. I think that was the one where he uh, freaking Sandstorm did the whiff punter from like. A quarter of the stage in, like literally the dash jump and just freaking just bopped him. I'm like, yeah, he <laughs> just caught him lacking, dude, out there. Uh, like, dude, it was uh, that, that was a, that was a rough one, man, for those guys. I do hope they fr find a way to bring it back. Um, I do think, honestly, I think as I mean, I don't know how you guys feel, but I, I think that the comp that Rose J and Merman use, I'm not sure how strong that is in kind of where the current meta is going. I think they're really good players, which is why they got to where they were. And obviously they were seated as such too. But I, as I feel like there's people just kind of like new powerhouses rising or like, you know, coming to like really dive into this game, like, you know, Sandstorm and Light Wisp and stuff as well. Like, I felt like there was such a huge expose on that comp 
Like, they couldn't do anything, man. Like you said, like, Arya was rough because a lot of her stuff, even though it's really strong, it takes some time. And it's like, they you can just shield. So they're just, like, neutered. Like, you can do your cool stuff, whatever. doesn't matter. Once we know it's going to be a cocoa firm, we just pop it, and we're good. Yep. And then it's, like, bugs, you know, like, being able to shield that stuff, too. Dude, I even saw Lightwist would delete the rocket with his up air. Like, he would just up air it. And like go about his day, or like you just put like a platform. You do the platform, it explode the rocket, and then he'd be good. So like he was just neutering even rockets. Like rockets weren't enough. Creating like platforms in a platform yeah. fighter is a very, very, very strong. I want to say genre breaking uh, thing. But who would have thought? Huh? What yeah, experience might we have? Multiple that? games. It's crazy. Yeah, multiple, yeah. multiple <laughs> games. Wow. Shocking. Imagine yeah. that you're able to create a platform and that can just erase projectiles like Bugs Bunny's rocket to the point where you don't even have to deal with it or even interact. <laughs> yeah. So they were like, I, I think on one side of the coin, I was actually really excited to see that because I think that people like a finally seen Steven being played to somewhat of his potential, right? Yep. Because we have not seen that for a very long time. There's a lot of Stevens out there that have been kind of like solid and they've like had some, yeah. We haven't seen um, it yeah, online. Yeah, we haven't seen it in a line. Um, we've seen some online um, and have had some moments of brilliance, but uh, definitely Light was seemed like the most complete Steven that I've watched personally in a while, so that was really incredible to see. But yeah, man, like just knowing it's like, okay, these tools that usually would cover the space and really dictate the pace of this match, gone from both of these characters and so it's just a lot of times it was just them just getting pummeled to oblivion and it's like even if they get an opening what are they gonna get i think i saw one time when uh when uh, rose was actually able to take someone off the top right utilizing the uh, you know stealing uh Merriman's face to do his combo right to get the extension with the nair and it's like and I'm like, oh, it's so sick, body. I'm like, dude, these guys are getting so trash that it even matter. Like that, that did not matter. Yeah. Like he, he killed them at like some like low percent too. And I'm like, don't care. Like <laughs> you, you guys are, you guys are dying off the side. <laughs> yeah, completely relevant. Like it, that, it was just such a dominant fashion. And I love seeing the dominant fashion into like their the way that they're like they're playing their neutral and their combo game and all this stuff. But I also like seeing it when the overarching strategy, like the meta strategy is also like shutting them down. Cause I think that's one of the cool things about this game, right? When you look at it, it's like, it's a doubles game, right? It's a team, it's focus on teams, but it's like, you also have these team mechanics that are put into the game. And so it just enhances it. Right. And so you have these overarching strategies that you need to deal with. And you saw some people going for these things more so too. I mean, even um, Fred who was was playing, but they had oh, I think it was a K seven right when he was playing with wow. Batman right. And he was teaming with a Velma, and so uh, they would go off and you know jump in Velma's arm, get the free you know get the free armor course, make sure get the words of wisdom going, and then like off to the races right and fight. And like those those kind of strategies is always really cool to see how strong they can be, and then how people create counter team strategies to that and i think we saw that a lot in that 6-0 um you would have if you blink you missed it but we definitely saw it for sure and man it that looked rough for that team like i, I don't know how that team plays against people with comparable comparable skill levels and gets through that because a lot of the characters main like strong suits were shut down just like that yeah, hey. it, it, it's kind of like an assassin thing too, right? I, I just don't yeah. know where assassins kind of fit into this meta. Same, so yep. same. We've seen assassins be successful, and I feel like if you're playing assassin, you're probably gonna fill that frontline role because you know we're talking about how there's there there's clearly a frontline and a backline, right? And a lot of characters have moves where even if you're not a mage, like look at Harley, if you're in the backline, you can set up a box, you can set up your bomb you you most characters have something to do if they're currently in the back uh -huh. but i just feel like uh assassins should be in the front line and there's just a lot of other characters right now that can be in the front line that bring more to the team because do you want your frontliner to be fragile right yeah and 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 the thing about assassins is usually they're combo characters and it's not a good thing if your combo takes a long time that's not yeah. a good thing in doubles in general because the longer your combo takes, 
the more time your opponent's teammate can come and interrupt it, right? Yeah. So just having simple, like, two to three pieces is always very strong in doubles. So, yeah, yeah it, no, it's I a big agree. question mark for the Assassin class in general. I know... Wait, 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 wait. What? I have a question. What's up? What's I up? just brought up question marks. I've been doing a lot of talking, but no one has brought this up, so I'll be the guy to, to ask the question. Ain't a cat. Here we I have go. a question for you, buddy. Here we go. So, you know, I'm looking at things like so there's go. like this little invitational thing a couple days ago. It was single elimination, but had some good players in there like Tax and Zage, Rose J, Mirror Man, all them, and Sandstorm. He Sandstorm won. won it. He won it. And then I look at LTC, doubles from losers. And I'm like, damn, Sandstorm won that too. He won. So I, got, I got to ask the question, brother. Who, who is the best Wonder Woman right now? Mm. I guess we'll find out at the next land we're both at. Ooh, okay. So you're not you're not willing to concede it. You just you got something to say too. Okay. I mean, let's okay. see. I won Evo. You did. That was a bigger tournament with yes, more sir. people. Mm-hmm. He won a one v one tournament, which cool. I mean, I don't play one, so I'm happy That's he won. Fair. And then uh, what? He won LTC. You but uh, even though that tournament had less people, people mm-hmm. have been playing the game longer. So. I guess the best way to find out is the next land. That's it. Okay. <laughs> I respect that. No, what, what, what you want me to say? You gave the TV <laughs> media <laughs> training answer. That's it's not a media train answer. answer. That's, well, in my done. opinion, well, that's done. the answer. I mean, if, if you really want me to say it, I'll obviously be like, I think I'm the better Wonder Woman, right? And in his mind, he definitely here. thinks he's the better Wonder Woman. The only okay. way we can prove that is if we actually both end up facing off offline. So people are waiting. So let's do it. All right, I like. Well, it. Let's get it, man. Are you kidding me? I'm never. I'm not one to back down at all. There we go. There we hey, go. Man. The cat. I say it with your chest, man. Yep. <laughs> say it with your chest, man. I'll t- I'll toast to that, man. I'll toast to that. The <laughs> weekly toast, man. All day. <laughs> I mean, regardless, regardless, and this is an also a media trained answer, by the way. Uh, you know how some people are pretty territorial over uh their characters. Like, mm-hmm. I gotta be the only one doing well with this character. I get excited when I see other people playing Wonder Woman, whether they're just picking her up or like they or, or they play her and they're finding success. Right. So Sandstorm winning the ones tournament. I wanted Oopster to win, but Sandstorm won. So I'm just like, yes, let's go. Wonder Woman won. A Wonder Woman actually won another offline tournament. Yes. Wonder Woman won. I want people to play her. I think the only time I don't want people to play her is if they're only picking her. I think that I think the kind of players that I don't respect that much are the players that just play what's meta because it's meta and that's it. There's like no soul, no attachment, no passion to the character. I'm only picking this character because I think this character can win. That's it. AKA like right now in this patch, this character, these are the best characters. So we're going to play these characters. You know what I mean? I, I just think eh, yeah, boring, I, I people like that very too. boring, but there yeah, are players yeah. like that. There yeah. are players like that. And uh, that's what they do. That's how they try to win. So when I see them lose, it's just even better. But when it comes to people that, nah, this is the character that I've been rocking with. So I'm going to just stick it out with this character. No problem. Or let's say your character gets nerfed so bad that they're unplayable, right? And you go and you move on to like a new main. I don't consider that the same thing as just playing what's meta. We're just going to rock whatever is the best composition right now. And then when this team falls off, we're going to move on to the next one. Those are the ones I feel are boring, and I love seeing them lose. But other than that, I, I don't really care. So when Sandstorm went over to Bugs Bunny, I'm just like, I don't blame you, to be honest. For Evo, I do not blame you at all. But, I mean, look where he's back at, right? He's back on Wonder Woman. So it's just like, all right, yeah, cool, dude. Win. Keep doing you. It's great. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll see you at the next land. Can't wait. But this is the shit that makes the game interesting, right? Imagine, imagine, let's say, I don't know, there was just a definitive best Wonder Woman, right? And there you go. That's it. And for that time, that was me after winning Evo. Cool, right? Now that someone else is also stepping up to the plate and showing they have what it takes to also play the character to that level, not only does it make it more entertaining as a whole in general, but it also makes it more entertaining for me as well. Makes it more spicy. I hate this boring... I'm so used to just boring storylines where everybody has to be all nice and shit and goo goo gaga ask answers and stuff like that. But uh, when I respect a player, I respect a player. And I respect Sandstorm's ability on Wonder Woman. So regardless of anything, yes, I will defend whatever title that I may have. People are going to have their opinions on who's better. 
But the only way to really get that answer is to see us actually fight. So can't wait for that to happen offline. There it is. Dang, I, like I get that, the man. hot takes. A little sizzling. Oh. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Take right off the stove. Pop yeah. Yeah. Damn, man. <laughs> he cooking, man. What was he cooking, man? <laughs> so real quick, Ben. I mean, obviously, you know, LTC uh, was sick. We didn't get, of course, uh, Rick because Rick was not allowed to be played. That being said, seen some, you know, Rick players pop up here and there. What are your guys' initial uh, viewpoint of Rick, like, as a character? Like, do you, do you guys think he's really, really strong? Do you guys think that he's, uh, you know, average, mediocre? Like, what do you guys look at? I think Rick is godlike. Uh, I'm going to keep it a whole buck 50 with you, bro. I don't think he's an expert level character. At first glance, I thought he was an expert level character. But as I saw and I played him more and more, I'm like, yo, this character's fun as shit. He's pretty simple. I mean, his his goal is pretty simple as well. Uh, I am in love with his design, first and foremost, as a Rick and Morty fan. Uh, I'm not one of the diehard, diehard fans that are going crazy over that Szechuan sauce, I think it's called, or whatever it is, mm-hmm. but, yeah. Chris, I, <laughs> but I do, in fact, love the Meeseeks. I actually care more about the Meeseeks than Rick himself, I, and the lines, this is off topic a little bit, but the lines in the game <laughs> that, <laughs> that people have, especially like Shaggy saying, I hope you pay those Meeseeks, or Wonder Woman, in my opinion, has the best one. Those Meeseeks deserve to be free. I'm just like, speak, yeah. woman, speak. I love it. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, man. <laughs> okay, what the heck? Get this gym out of here, man. Oh, my gosh. So, for me personally, it's just like, all right. I'm looking at Rick. I kind of wish you could have played him at LTC, but I understand why. Like, totally understand why you can't, but I wish. So, for basically uh, Rick to be where he is now, I think he's a strong character. I think he isn't that difficult to actually execute. I think uh, performing with him at top level will actually be hard, too. Because, like, there's those characters, right? I think Wonder Woman picking her up is easy, right? But succeeding with her and pushing her to the actual brink of what she can do, I don't think is the easy thing to do, especially at top level. And I feel like Rick is going to kind of fall into that category. Let me tell you something. And I learned this from someone in chat. When you polymorph someone and you turn them into a rain dog, their weight shifts to 20 units, I believe. Do you understand how yes, light that okay. is and how busted that is? So you mean to tell me a character like Giant, if I polymorph him into a rain dog, I have the ability to potentially kill him at sub 40, a character that's supposed to almost be living to 170 to 200? That is nuts. So with his overall utility and kit in a team-based game, we're hitting that polymorph necessarily, I want to say, in singles is like, that's kind of hard, right? But singles ain't the main format, which is why I don't really care about it. But yeah. he also it has com- combos in the polymorph. But. When it comes to teams, though, and all that chaos is going on, not only do you get the added benefit of screwing someone over with that, but of course, you can just inherently buff your own team as well with it. And that's just one tool that he has. He has that slow laser, which I feel like is an excellent neutral tool. His forward air is sh- not only strong, but it can combo. And of course, it has a lot. It's deceptive in its range, in my opinion. Uh, the, the My main gripe with Rick, right? And when he first came out, I already saw... And this happens too, by the way, when characters come out automatically within an hour. We got to nerf this character. We got to buff him. Matter of fact, 20 minutes. We got to nerf this character. We got to buff this character. I noticed that the one thing after all this time of using Rick that I would actually change is his Mega Seed. I think his Mega Seed is absolutely useless in a sense where when you actually hit the Mega Seed, the, the amount of time it takes to hit that move with how, I don't want to say big or small the hitbox is, is like when you get the silence proc off, it stays for such a low amount of time to the point where you didn't really even silence. Like, I feel like you didn't silence anybody with how short it is. I would up that to three to five seconds personally to make it more rewarding to actually land the Mega Seed. Because right now it just feels like it isn't necessarily that impactful of a move. But uh, I think Rick is really going to pop off when players get so much better with the portals. I think that is the one thing still lacking currently, and once that gets in check, it's a wrap, bro. I, I think that character is going to yeah. have a, a spot in the meta for sure. Yeah, the portal is pretty freaking wild, man. 
You know, it's funny. Um, one thing I am kind of getting worried about, though, I'll say, uh, after seeing Morty and then Rick, I'm getting kind of worried about some of these characters' recoveries. Really? Oh, like <laughs> how hard it is to actually like. <laughs> I think some of these recoveries are getting kind of good. <laughs> kind of OD, like, bro. Yeah, a little <laughs> OD. You know really, I mean? baby. Let yeah, them live. D- yeah, just saying, Literally. man. Like, I mean, yeah, they're definitely living. That's for sure. You know. Yeah, um, Rick and Morty like, specifically have insanely broken recoveries. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> wild that Rick can just drift out and then like just you know just portal into his stuff. Obviously, you know the cooldown associated and everything too. Yeah. So I respect that, but. I, I do think that I do hope that they are cognizant of not allowing some of these characters just to have these insane recoveries. Like, I mean, Rick right now, he has to teleport. He has his freaking like jet fulsion, like just flies off. Uh-huh. And then he can also like float, right? With the Meeks. So like, I think that I, there's a lot of characters right now. I'm like, or like the newer characters that are coming in. I'm like, man, the recoveries are kind of getting really good. And it's kind of taken away some of the game that I honestly like most enjoy. Now, I'm not saying that just because I'm a Superman main, but I do think that, you know, we, we want to make sure that there's strong recoveries, but not overburning to the point where we almost have the kind of the bugs effect, right? Where it's like, oh, this character's off stage. If you don't outright kill them, then they pretty much guarantee they're always coming back. I, I think that should not be the case, whatever character it is. They uh-huh. should. You can be a little stronger than average, whatever, but it takes away such a a big part of the game. And yeah, I just don't want to see that skipped. But that's my opinion. I think Rick's sick, though. Um, I definitely don't think he's an expert character. I think he has too many strong things at a basic level that he can just do and and win. So um, I think that if you want to get super nuanced and do some like insane combos or whatever like that, then yeah, there's some expert side to him, but he doesn't mm-hmm. need that at all. No, yeah. That's my goal. I do think that they do at least Bugs Rocket. I think they did a good job of giving it a good amount of startup. Some yeah. of the coolest clips you've ever seen in this game are because Bugs is trying to do a rocket and someone gets like a crazy dunk or a crazy like side air or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I believe at the at LTC actually we saw Sandstorm doing that. Like, oh, I I'm gonna re- I'm gonna hard commit. Think you're I'm essentially gonna read that you're going to start the rocket up hit you with a side air, hit you with a down air, right? Stuff like that. Um, so having really good recoveries, but giving it a lot of startup, I think is a good way to do it. I don't think most, like, I don't, I think having a really broken recovery option should be a very niche thing. Like, oh, that's that's one of the big reasons why this character is really strong. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It definitely shouldn't be a common thing because I do like the offstage in this game. And I, I think even for Brawlhalla, like Brawlhalla's offstage is, crazy and wild and it's something that multiverse kind of shares with Brawlhalla in that sense right with the thank god i think it's sick like that i think i I love it and and that's why i love like even watching melee to this day i still love watching melee because all the interactions most of them happen off stage i mean if it if it's a floaty character then then not so much but Mm -hmm. for most of the top tiers a lot of the advantage state and disadvantage state is off stage and that's just exciting to watch because there's some type of risk right how many when you get reversaled off stage, you could just die. Whereas in you know Smash Four and Ultimate, a lot of the advantage state and disadvantage state is on the ledge, and ledge trapping is still hype, but it's way less risk, right? You're on stage, people can like ledge trap very safely by roll or even like more towards center stage and stuff like that. So there's not that excitement as a spectator of like, oh man, he's going out there. You know what I mean? Like, I wonder if if they're gonna get reversaled or not, or if they're gonna hit the edge guard and stuff like that. So. Me particularly, that that's what I like, and I think balancing good recoveries with high startup is a, a good way to do it. I don't know how, I don't know specifically how much uh, startup the Rick portal has and stuff like that, but you know, that's just my two cents on. All yeah, for, for that. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I I actually got to head out though. So I, I I guess we could just do a quick around the horn. Yep. Sure. So I, I guess just like final thoughts on Rick. Do you guys want to close out on that? Uh, yeah. my my only final thoughts on Rick are: I wish I could spawn more me seeks. <laughs> more me seeks, uh, bro. I'm a, uh, you don't understand, bro. I think the me seeks are like the best things ever. <laughs> really, it's big, pretty funny. They're cool. Yeah, really big Rick fan. Actually, I think he's awesome. I do wish he'd come out 
I wish he either come a week prior or like LTC was a week after because I would have liked to see how Rick fared in that competitive environment. I think it would have been really interesting. Could have actually maybe shook up some of the results as well, depending on how much people have invested the the time who were there. Um, but I think you know the the rule of thumb maybe is like the character should be out for at least a week to mm-hmm. ten days before it's tournament legal for something like that. Um, obviously not including online stuff, but yeah, I get it. But no, Rick's sick and it gives me. Uh, a lot of encouragement for what Black Adam and Stripe will bring to the table when they eventually release as well. Yeah, I'd say on my side, kind of similar thing, like super sick character, man. Um, I had a lot of fun with him. Like I remember he came out and I was like, man, I couldn't play him because I had to do work, finished work, sat down with the character. And like, you know, at that time I was like, I'm not going to watch anyone play. I'm just going to do my thing and see what I can find. And like just playing the character for a little bit, like, dude, this character is so insane and like very, very fun. Um, very creative ways of like you know this combo game and stuff too, which I always love to kind of f- flesh out. So really cool character. Uh, I think the character is pretty strong. Uh, I feel like obviously not the same as uh, Morty, but there's a lot of similarities, right, and overlaps for obvious reasons. But still feels unique as a character, right? Even though the kind of the they have a lot of tools that uh, have similar properties per se, which I think is awesome. I think the polymorph is wild. Um, I've seen some people kind of ba- do some different baits with it. Yep. Um, I've seen some combos into it too, guaranteed combos into Polymorph, those kind of things. So it's pr- it's pretty insane to see. Um, yeah, I definitely think that character is going to affect the meta. And all in all, man, as they continue to create these new characters, um, I'm I'm very excited for the future of this game. For sure. I, I know Rick was a character that was actually in the uh, like one of the very first um, alphas they had. I actually played him a long, long time ago. Uh, but like just seeing all these new characters come out and the way they play the uniqueness um, and I feel like the characters are unique enough where it's like it's fun it's different it's exciting but they're not like stare win conditions or like the how, how you counteract their strategies it's not as insane as like say like some other platform fighters you know like ultimate like I think there's sometimes you have these characters that are out and they have very different um counter strategies and so when you have so many characters coming out cuz you know this game is going to have a lot of characters at the end of the day yeah. like you my fear is always that you get to a point where you have people just beating you because you just get sham wild by tech you haven't seen because there's character rosters so big and the char- the game is so balanced where you have to respect those characters mm-hmm. um but i i feel i don't feel like that's going to happen for this game i think they found a way to be unique and yet like the characters still don't seem like they're out of this world where it's like oh i need to apply a whole different strategy in order to win which is nice so really well done hats off to that team uh, on the characters for sure yeah yep and for me i think rick is super sick i think the portal combos will be really cool in ones but in twos we'll, you'll probably save your portal for disadvantage or saving your teammate i think it's cool that the portal's reversed from morty's and you can actually like you want people in so and obviously rick having the better portals makes sense and i do agree with Nakat. i think the up air silence is not very impactful it doesn't really last too long and on top of that i just don't think most characters use specials when they're in juggle situations. Like, sometimes you use them to stall, but I think a silence on a move that sends you horizontal will be more impactful because you could force low recoveries, right? Like, you hit someone out, they're silenced, so, like, you... Oof, they can't stall with their specials, right? It'll, it'll be really strong. strong. It'll be really, yeah. Right, right. I, I even Because even if you make the silence longer, I just don't, like, when you're in a juggle situation, most of the time you're either dodging left or right, or you're trying to land with a dare or something that right like mo- most characters don't use special so I, I in that particular situation i just don't think it's too powerful but i do think you should just make the silence stronger um or longer at the very least i think uh i think rick has insane normals like just his side air alone is insane it's crazy good so just I, and that's why i feel like maybe he feels a little bit more easier to pick up because you can just have fundies and use his good normals right and then yeah. use all the setup stuff later so figure that kind of stuff out so that that's my initial thoughts about rick i do think he's a very strong character and i do think he's gonna affect the meta so very excited to see how he does so and what kind of comps go really well with rick i actually think rick and morty will be a really cool comp i definitely want to see that mm-hmm. but yeah i had a great time on the podcast man yeah and so real quick y'all in the chat I need two things from you, or two announcements, rather. Uh, For the next podcast, chat, let me know right here. Who do you guys want to see as a guest on the next episode? Like, let us know in the chat, of course. And 
Next episode actually won't be at 11 a.m. We're going to go over a standard time that we can actually set up so that it can be, you know, more so in the day. You feel me? Uh, and yeah, of course, we're going to have some more hot topics for you guys. This has been the Weekly Toast episode one. We will catch you guys on the next one. Stay tuned on Twitter for updates. Of course, take it easy. Peace out. Deuces. Peace.